Hey guys, this is Sky Guy. Welcome to the first episode of Story Now. Today I'm going to be talking about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But before that show, let's talk about this show. In this show, Story Now, I'm going to look into the crafting of stories in television, film, books, and even video games. Now there are a lot of sites and channels and people who are reviewing everything under the sun. And so anything I talk about will have been reviewed many times over and quite likely done by very awesome people. And that's awesome, but that's not what I'm attending to do here. I'm going to talk about story, that thing that we actually go to see films and television and books and video games and even the internet for. I'm going to talk about that story and to, and sort of explore how it works, how you can tell a good story or tell a great story. So this isn't going to be a thumbs up, thumbs down approach. I want to get into the meat of the, the plot and characters and themes behind the media and how, it, how they flow and are combined and how they're conveyed. I also want to be, see how story can be done differently. How you can improve it or enhance it or just experiment with it to see something new or something fresh. Uh, now, I'm not going to have a fixed schedule. I'm not going to, you know, rush forward to see the latest movie and post it up immediately or follow the episodes of any, any show I'm watching with a regular log. I want to follow the stories. If there's anything interesting in a movie I see, I want to put that up there. Some missed potential or something that, that was actually rather exemplary. Uh, the several TV shows that I would talk about or follow, I will not have an episodic view of those. Rather, I want to look at how the story is progressing and, and in what direction they are going, what direction they could go. Uh, now, any and all feedback I would welcome, I can take it. You, you don't have to play nice. And I also welcome any requests or questions, but I can't promise that I'll get to them or, you know, be able to follow through because I, I, I am somewhat busy with other things. So now, it's time to discuss Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now let's start by talking about what works in this show. The number one thing that, that, that this show had to do was be more than just a spin-off of uh, Marvel's cinematic universe. It had to be more than just a, a small-scale version of Thor and Captain America and Iron Man and all of those other characters. And to a large part, it does that. It, it breaks the mold of the, the, the superhuman mythos. And it sort of changes how we look at it. In this, the heroes are, are actually what is usually thought of as the villains or obstacles in a, in a superhero opera, uh, which is basically the faceless government agents. The, the, the government goons, if you will. And, and having those as the protagonists really helps us look at, at the same setup from a different perspective. We see that most of the times people who obtain powers or who go after powers don't really have the moral fortitude to hold up to them. Uh, many times you see power corrupting in, in a very literal sense. And so story-wise, I think it's it's not only avoids becoming a ripoff or a derivation of the cinematic universe, it actually sort of enhances it by giving us a different look at things. Uh, also, the acting is superb. Uh, however the characters have been established, the, the, the cast is really able to breathe life into them. You can, you can pick up on, on subtle dif differences, subtle nuances of, of their characters, you, you see breathing living people as opposed to cardboard cutouts, which can often be the trouble with these sort of ensemble shows. Uh, also, the banter and just the dialogue as a whole is really good. It, a lot of people take that as a given because the show is run by Joss Whedon, but just comparing it to shows in general it has some of the best dialogue. Everything, everything seems to have the purpose of simultaneously explaining what's going on, explaining what a character's approaches 
or ideas of the situation, as well as simultaneously showing who those characters are. You learn a lot more about the characters by how they how, how they convey themselves and how they react than exposition or biographies. And while this is this is the basics of good storytelling, it's so so there's so many shows, there's so many films that violate this that it is really worth noticing that that the dialogue is captured right. And the last thing that's that's really great about the show is is their pacing. Uh, they went for a seven act structure, which allows them to keep it tighter. There's not, there's no bloat. They're able to fit in more story, and they have to keep each act, uh, each sort of segment, into its uh, a really small, tight area, and that forces them to to eliminate aspects that won't be useful to the story at hand or to the story this the series is trying to tell as a whole. Uh, and it does also help emphasize how many things you can get out from, how, how many things have to serve multiple purposes. Uh, the setup, the scenery, the, um, the characterizations. Uh, the other thing about the seven-act structure is that it allows the show to turn on a dime. You can, you can have the story in a specific episode completely being reinterpreted every every you know seven eight minutes which allows for much more intriguing and much more complex storytelling uh and you know the episodes as a whole generally the episodes are are pretty good uh you see that the episodes have they, they got off on a sharp slightly shaky start in the first episode, but they've been getting better and better. And I don't think as it stands for the last few weeks, anyone could really have a problem with the episodes per se. Now, what doesn't work is something that's fairly important to the, the series as a whole, the character balance. It's, it's a huge problem here. Now, a lot of people say that, you know, Sky's character is terrible, we want to get rid of her. The fact of the matter is, if you think about the show, removing just that one character, it falls apart. And that's a problem because you don't even have to remove the character from the show as a whole. When you remove Sky's character from any given scene, immediately there's a lag. And that lag is, is basic, a basic problem of character balance. Now, what we have are six characters in the show. We have Coulson, we have uh, Melinda May, we have uh, Agent Grant, we have the, the neophyte Sky, who's supposed to be our sort of look into the working of S.H.I.E.L.D., and then we have Fitz and Simmons, who are the techies. The problem is, we really only see three basic character roles being fulfilled here. We have Sky filling the neophyte, the, the sort of everyman, the Arthur Dent, if you will, uh, who we can see the show through. Then we have the excitable, uh, incredibly intelligent, slightly incomprehensible tech expert, which is filled by both Fitz and Simmons. Now, this is played up for effect, and I think it's actually rather interesting. Uh, they're constantly referred to as one person. It, uh, they're oftentimes the only people who see conflict between them is themselves when they're arguing with each other. But that 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 sort of uh, in-universe ident identification of it seems to work. The problem comes when you think about Grant, May, and uh, Coulson. Those three characters, they they're basically the same person. I know there are, there, there are nuances that are different. Grant is, is slightly more solid in his belief. May is very distrustful of situations. Coulson is somewhat retro. But the problem is that when they interact with each other, they're filling the same role, the role of, of incredibly competent, somewhat soft-spoken expert. Someone, they all, all of their humor is based on wry witticisms to one another or generally to some, uh, uh, to another character. Uh, their tone is the same. Their role is the same. They're all trying to form, to, to, to 
you know, be the highly competent, somewhat reluctant mentor. And that's a problem because you can't, there's very little that you can, very little interaction that you can have amongst the three of them. Similarly, it's just like Fitz and Simmons. When you have the two of them alone talking, they argue, but but it doesn't seem like interaction. It doesn't seem like they have any sort of character growth. It's more like their discussion is is some sort of some form of talking to oneself. That there, it's like sneezing. It's something that happens to one character, but it's not. They're not bouncing off each other because they're, to all of intents and purposes, the same person. And you see the same problem with Colson, Melinda May, and Grant. And because of that, you only really have three functional characters. Now, if you go back to the Avengers, which is the main thing that, that anyone ever compares this show to, but it's a good example of this. There were five five or six characters, but they all were different. They they, they filled different roles. You had you had the the Thor who had the inferiority complex and the chip on his shoulder about, you know, Loki, who's the villain and is also his responsibility you had the arrogant yet you know fragile uh tony stark who didn't really know how to handle himself in a situation like this but who was just incredibly full of himself and impressed with what he could do you had the straight arrow steve rogers you had uh you you had uh bruce banner who was incredibly tormented by his past. He was afraid of what he could do to the world, and so he was constantly trying to get out of the way. Uh, and then you you had uh, Nick Fury, who was trying to to manipulate the, the scenes, sort of trying to get layer after layer of contingency, and who really didn't trust anybody, not even people on his side, with, with, with his plans. Uh, and similarly, you know, all of the secondary characters seem to serve a separate function as well. But the thing was, in that show, and in that movie, sorry, uh, routinely you saw just a small subset of the characters. You saw, you know, um, Coulson, the, the, the sort of bright-eyed believer, uh, talking to Thor, and that worked. Then later you had Thor bouncing off of uh, Tony Stark, and that worked. And then you had Captain America and Tony Stark. Uh, arguing or sort of bouncing off each other. Then you had a slight montage where Bruce Banner and Tony Stark were talking about things. And at every stage, because the characters occupied a different functional role, they were able to, to sort of help each other grow. They're supposed to bounce off each other. And they were able to, to end in different places than they began. But there's there, there isn't any sort of difference here. You... you had that scene in last week's episode where Melinda May and Grant and Coulson were all talking about what to do now that Sky was under arrest, there wasn't anything happening there. It was all, it was all monotone, not, not in terms of how they were speaking, but in terms of the drama, because they were all on one page. They were all looking at the world through the same shade of glasses, and that's a problem for the show. Uh, I, I think that... Joss Whedon, more than other people, would be willing to change things, introduce new characters, you know, kill off, kill off, or, you know, and I don't mean literally kill off, uh, reassign or otherwise remove a few of the superfluous characters from the show and introduce someone new. Now, what would be interesting would be seeing someone who's completely outside of S.H.I.E.L.D., someone who S.H.I.E.L.D.'s been interacting with, but someone who, so so he would be different from from Sky, who who has this, you know, completely, you know, who has almost virgin eyes on on the scene, uh, someone who's interacted with Shield, but someone who doesn't trust it, and someone who wants to operate on the outside. Uh, you could also have someone who's a neophyte hero, someone who's trying to to, you know, follow in the footsteps of the Avengers, but isn't really very good at it. So you have the 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 sort of dichotomy within the team, uh, which would allow them to, to take different approaches and to interact with this individual, uh, have them talk about how to deal with this person, who, whether they should interact, or whether they should encourage them, whether they should 
uh, stop them, whether they how long they could go on cleaning their messes, that sort of thing. There are, there are quite a few uh, potent areas where you could insert a character, and I think one of the most promising ones would be someone outside Shield, either as as a uh, an anti-hero or, or somewhat of an antagonistic protagonist, or have someone who's inadvertently an antagonist, someone who's causing friction without meaning to do it for for, for Shield, and then that you 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 have the agents of Shield being assigned to look after this one person, uh, plot-wise if not directly, and with that we sort of segue into the second problem, which is there's no real mandate that these uh, agents have. This is supposed to be a, you know, best of the best world-class team that Coulson assembled. But what exactly do they do? At no point is this illustrated. In the first episode, it was just Phil Coulson wants a team and he wants the best people. And that was the extent of the first episode, him sort of forming up his team and, and dealing with this guy with powers. But as the episodes have gone on, their mandate has been in increasingly blur been blurry. Uh, they're not exactly investigating things. They had that one episode where they were investigating, where they started off investigating thieves, and there was another episode where they were they were looking at this. Uh, I think it was an O eight four, some sort of unknown object. Uh, but. At the same time, they they sort of seem to function as a response to, uh, as a yeah as a response team. A friend seemed to describe it them to me like that. And it seems most apt. They just sort of go wherever they're told to go. The problem is that's a that's not how any sort of government organization would work per se, and that's especially not how they would use a highly resourced team that you know, they established this This would be in the first episode. Uh, generally, you have one group of people that would go and contain a situation. You have one type of people who would go and investigate a situation, find out what's going on. You'd have another type of team that would go and actually resolve the situation, uh, like they did in the, the Graviton episode, where they went to sort of rescue someone that they knew had been taken and who had, he had been taken by. Uh, that's not all done by the same team because they need vastly different skills. The problem is this team doesn't seem to be much of anything. It's it's sort of an odd jobs team. And that's not an extreme that that's not the extremely elite team that we were promised and it's not one that works to tie episode to episode. Um because even if you look at shows like uh, Cowboy Bebop, where it was extremely episodic and there was almost no relation between the episodes, the, the thing that tied them together was this team, Spike's team, had a certain type of purpose. They wanted to get money through their bounty hunting jobs. This doesn't have that sort of tie. It's just, okay, these people work for S.H.I.E.L.D. and so they'll do whatever they're told to do. But that's not a purpose, and that's not something that can guide these characters through the season. Uh, so on the these two basically are, are the storytelling problems here. There's no mandate for the team. Uh, they don't have any internal mandate that we want to go and do in this. They don't have any external mandate that your job is to do this. Um, they're not like, you know, the Enterprise, whose mandate was to explore new worlds. They're, they're not like... Uh, you know, uh, the regular detective show where their mandate is to solve the weekly crime. Uh, they really don't have a mandate. And the second problem is of character balance. The The characters aren't balanced very well. But, again, these, these problems are balanced out fairly well by what they do right. They alter our understanding of the Marvel Universe. The acting is superb. The... Dialogue as a whole functions very well, every line serving two, if not three, purposes, and the episodes are paced very well. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it. That, that, that's the good and the bad of, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, hopefully, they they will undertake some sort of restructuring. Uh, apparently, they took, they took a gap this week, and apparently they've cast someone new. Hopefully, this is going to be similar to the first few episodes of Angel, where Joss Whedon refreshed the cast. Um, 
and hopefully it'll be great. Uh, so this has been the first episode of Story Now. I'm, for lack of a better word, your host, Sky Guy. See ya, guys. <laughs>